And my next guests are both Texas lawmakers who have witnessed the crisis firsthand and urging the administration to take action. Joining me now are Texas Congressman Tony Gonzalez and August Pfluger. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, you saw this. Um, describe it for people because we can see it with our own eyes. But when you are there, you know, outside of the pictures, you get the full sense of the enormity of the problem. Yeah, I represent Del Rio, and uh, right now in Del Rio, it is as if a hurricane has hit that small town. You know, Border Patrol and other law enforcement agencies are doing everything they possibly can. The unity that they've done, that they've posed to come together to get through this crisis is unlike any other. The latest updated numbers I have as of this morning are there 4,400 migrants still remaining under the bridge, but there's, a, there's over 2,000 migrants on the Mexican side of the border. I mean, the Border Patrol agents are literally saving lives. Just last night, uh, one of the migrants delivered a child. Lit they literally delivered a child underneath the bridge. These are the type of things that are happening every single day throughout, not only in Del Rio, but other sectors as well. Meanwhile, in El Paso, they, they, uh, the El Paso agents caught $2 million worth of narcotics. This is a problem that is continuing to grow, continuing to, to spiral out of control, and expelling migrants that do not qualify for asylum is part of that solution. But, Mr. Pfluger, as you heard, there are many Democrats who are now demanding that the administration reverse course. You even had the envoy just resign, saying that it was wrong to be sending these people who don't qualify for asylum back to Haiti. Your thoughts? Well, it's clear that it's a crisis, and President Biden getting attacked from both sides of the aisle is because he can't get a handle on this situation. You have a Democratic mayor of Del Rio. Mr. Lozano, who is, has been crying out for help. Tony Gonzalez is doing a great job. My hometown is about two hours from there, uh, and Tony's doing a great job of representing the interest and getting the story out. What I saw is, is just horrific on Saturday, 15,000 migrants. Meanwhile, yesterday, when asking Mayorkas a very simple question, is the border more secure under your leadership? He said, well, it's neither more secure nor less secure. I'm sorry, we have almost 1.5 million illegal immigrants as opposed to 500,000 last year. It's incredibly uh, disastrous what's going on. Mr. Gonzalez, what happens when all the Border Patrol has to focus on thousands of migrants there in Del Rio? The border is actually quite long, um, and there, we just do not have enough resources to cover all of it. Yeah, there is a national security uh, uh, event that, that is just brewing. I mean, you can see another 9-11 type event uh, on the on the horizon with everything that the debacle in Afghanistan coupled with a wide open border, a southern border, it just creates a, an environment ripe for disaster for Americans. In the Big Bend sector, the sector right over, very remote part of the, the southern border, uh, agents, very few agents, very limited resources. You know, if this administration was serious about protecting the southern border, they would focus on technology. That's a softer, one of the softer three elements that they could do to secure the border, but they have done nothing. It is as if, there are, they, the, is it as if the Biden administration is waiting for another 9-11 to happen. Mr. Fluger, what do you think happens in the next few days? I mean, you have the Biden administration trying to save its legislative agenda on, on economics and changing all of that. Okay, so they have that bucket. You know, the Afghanistan continues. This, the, the, all the Americans are not out. The special immigration immigrant visas are not out. You have inflation concerns. And then you have this crisis on the border. And the only time that they actually have had, for example, the one in charge, Kamala Harris, speak to it was when she mistakenly said, that the Border Patrol was whipping migrants. Well, it's clear that they're trying to shift the narrative away from the real disaster, whether it's Afghanistan or our southern border. Our country is now less secure because of President Biden. Where are the Democrats who just two years ago went to the border and cried out for help? Mm -hmm. I asked another question to Secretary Mayorkas yesterday, and that is, what is the number of known or suspected terrorists that have entered this country? Because the outgoing Border Patrol chief who left on his own free will wrote a letter and said that it is in record numbers. The American public deserves to know that. We're not going to let this administration shift the narrative away from the real disaster. We are less secure because of them. Whether it's Afghanistan or at our southern border, we need the president and the vice president to go there to acknowledge that this is a problem and to defend American interests and American citizens. Maybe last question to you, Mr. Gonzalez. With the, with the left now agitating, you've seen you know, the president ran as a moderate. Right, or that's how he said. He said he was a moderate, not a part of the Bernie wing, Bernie Sanders wing. But now you have the left asking this: Who do you think ends up winning his attention in this matter? 
Yeah, I think the loser in all of this is the American public. You know, here you have the House Democrats uh, finally getting, some of the House Democrats finally getting involved in this border crisis. And it's not because of the 33 abuse allegations by HHS for migrant children. Uh, it's not by some of the, the other chaos you're seeing, but it's racially driven. You know, one, uh, out of the 1.5 million migrants that have come over, many of them are brown. Many of them are, have a Hispanic descent coming from Central and South America. Yeah. Why was there no outrage then? The loser in all of this is the American public. Well, I know that Secretary Mayorkas is not the only one who works 18 hours a day trying to do its uh, work. I know that you two do as well. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.